Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this acceleration problem, they talk about a situation in car crashes, and they want us to figure out two things. So the first one for part A, they want us to figure out what the highest speed is that for the situation and the information they give that we could survive that. And then what is the shortest survivable distance over which the driver's headrest could come to, driver's head could come to rest. So before we get into it, let's just list the variables that they give in the question. It's a really good habit to get into. It will help out quite a bit whenever you're going through them. So in the situation, the car crash is coming to rest. So meaning it's stopping essentially. So the final velocity will be zero meters per second. The initial velocity for the question though is what we're trying to find for part A. So we don't know that information. Now we know that the acceleration is 50 G's. So what does that mean? We have 50 times G, which is equal to 50 times 9.8. So if we plug that in, we get 50 times 9.8 meters per second squared, which gives us 490. So that is 490 meters per second squared. In this case, I'm going to keep it positive right here, but later on you'll see that this will be a negative value since it's decelerating. So now we have acceleration, the velocities, now we need to figure out the time, and they tell us it is less than 30 milliseconds. So T, for it to be survivable, has to be less than that. So 30 milliseconds is also the same as saying 30 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. So now we have standard units. And let's see, is there anything else we can get from here? I don't believe so. Okay, so now for part A, we're trying to find the highest speed for initial velocity. So we'll be using the maximum values for everything. We'll use the full 50 Gs and we want the 30 milliseconds. So to do that, we're gonna use the kinematic equations and we want one that has all of the variables in here plus the one that we're looking for. So what we'll be using is V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time. So now we're um, solving for the initial velocity. So let's move that over to the other side. So we have V final minus V initial is equal to acceleration times time. The final velocity we said is zero, so we can get rid of that. So now we have V final negative is equal to acceleration times time. So now what we want to do is we want to multiply both sides of the equation by negative one. So we have positive V initial and not negative V initial. So we'll have V initial is equal to a negative acceleration times time. So now we have the initial velocity solved for. So let's plug in the variables for this portion. So we have V initial is equal to a negative acceleration. So now for, we have negative, and for acceleration, we solved it for 490 meters per second squared. And then we'll be multiplying that by the time, which we said is 30 times 10 to the third, negative third seconds. Okay, so now when we plug this in, we have a negative and then the acceleration we said is slowing down, so we have a negative 490 meters per second squared times the time, which we said was 30 times 10, not sine, times 10 to the negative three. So we have 14.7 meters per second. And that is our answer for part A. So that is the highest speed for the initial velocity for this situation. So now they want us to solve for what is the shortest survivable distance for this situation for the, the head to stop in a car crash. And so now we're gonna be using this initial velocity that we found and we can plug that into one of the other kinematic equations. So the one that we'll be using in this time is V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2a times the delta x. So we have all of the variables that we need plus the one that we're solving for. So we need to isolate 
delta x. So to do that, let's uh, first recognize that this is going to be zero. So if you find all goes away, like we talked about, we'll move this over. So we have negative v initial squared equals 2a delta x. Now to isolate delta x, we'll divide both sides of the equation by 2a. And now let's come up here. We have delta x is equal to negative v initial squared divided by 2 times the acceleration. So we have a negative, and this will be, we said the initial acceleration was 14.7 meters per second, and we'll square that whole value. And it's important to note when you plug this in the equation, we need the value here squared and then multiplied by the negative. Because if you see in just a second, we have two times the acceleration, which we said was negative 490 meters per second squared. Now, if you think about it with a delta X, we don't have a delta a negative delta X because we're moving in the positive X direction, at least in this situation. We're saying that we're starting over here and we're going over here. By convention, we usually move from left to right, just like you're reading a book. And then we're ending over here, so we're moving in the positive x direction. So we need a positive delta x. So by having the negative divided by a negative, that will give us a positive value. And so it's just, again, confirming that we've done our math correctly by thinking about that conceptually. So now we have negative 14.7 squared and then we'll divide all of that by two times the acceleration, which we said was negative 490 meters per second squared, which gives us 0 0.2205. And so that will be 0 0.22 meters. So here's our answer for part B for the shortest survivable distance. And then this is the fastest speed that you can go faster than that and you will pass away in the accident.